Greetings and welcome to In-Depth and DK Roster. And now Love Over Everything is a collaborative project and is focused on finding sustainable or two main goals, both under the overarching theme of addressing issues stemming from gender-based violence. Now to speak to these issues and more, we have Catherine Innes. She's the marketing manager, Sunshine Snacks, Associated Brands Industries Limited. We have Mohammed Mawakil, lead singer of Freetown Collective, we also have Tajna Lee Shields, a representative of Eve for Life out of the land of wood and water. Stay with us. We're enjoying this conversation. Welcome and thank you so much for joining us. And Mohammed, I want to start with you. Thank you in terms of giving an idea of, of where the idea for the Love Over Everything Foundation or project came from. I like that you um, made that little Freudian slip there because that's definitely where we want to head with it to make it into our foundation. But um, the idea for Love Over Everything, it's, we wanted to do a collaboration with, um, with ABIL and we didn't want to to create something that was simply given a message, a wide message, but didn't actually make some significant impact. We knew that we couldn't have some wide overarching impact to change the face of, of what was happening with gender-based violence. So we decided to do something very specific, which was to work with Rape Crisis Society here and Eve for Life in Jamaica. Um, love over everything for us is the idea that anything can be changed if addressed with love. And many times when we've said this, people have said, oh, isn't love too soft of an idea to approach things? And I often ask them, well, what's the alternative? You know, what, what do you want to go at it with? Because if, let's say, for instance, um, you have someone who has committed a crime and they're incarcerated and they're incarcerated for quite some time, but you decide that you treat them harshly as opposed to trying to rehabilitate that human being, what happens to them when the time is up and they have to come back out? You know, you have to show them love. You have to find ways to love these people who have, who have perpetrated. So we go at any problem we encounter with love, love over everything. Thank you so much for that. And Tajnali, Tajnali, let me bring you into the conversation, please. I'm asking for an overview of Eve for Life and how did you become involved with this project, hopefully soon to be a foundation? <laughs> All right, soon to be a foundation. Uh, hi, everyone. So as I said earlier, I'm Tajnali Shields from Eve for Life. E for Life is an organization that deals specifically with women and girls who have faced sexual violence. Um, we also have an interest in women living with HIV and, of course, the connection between the both. So something that we're always discussing or something we're always talking about is the fact that HIV transmission is seriously linked to gender-based violence and it's the lens from which we approach our interventions. Um, e for Life is an organization that deals especially with families. Um, I like the fact that Hamid spoke about how important love is in you know, these kind of inter interventions and these kinds of programs because something that we have noticed is that when you address family issues from that standpoint, from the standpoint of, you know, caring for everybody and, and meeting everybody where they are and trying to, you know, foster an environment of love and care, you get the best results. So we got involved with... Um, love over everything earlier this year um, and they've been supporting us in doing our interventions in many different ways so one of the big ways is through schools we're going to schools and we have conversations with girls about gender-based violence and we have conversations with boys about gender-based violence as well because we understand um, the nuance of gender-based violence and the the role everybody takes the, the roles that everybody should take in um, preventing gender-based violence. Uh, yeah, so that's that's our relation with Love Over Everything. And thank you so much for that. And it's nice that we in, we're inside these 16 years of activism and we're all wearing pieces or a lot of orange. And I'm glad we're able to have this conversation and we're not talking about power or shower. Uh, in the conversation. But Ms. Innes, let me let me bring you in. Thank you. And Associated Brands Industries Limited. Uh, why did why did ABIL decide to put the name and resources behind this project? 
Thank you. Thanks, first of all, for having us, um, Mr. Rasta. It's, it's pretty simple, to be fair. Um, the issue of gender-based violence is pervasive in our region. I mean, it's in the world, but I guess locking into our space and our region and our communities, it's really something that we can't accept any longer. And I mean, as an organization, just for reference, we are some of your favorite brands, be it Sunshine Snacks, Devon Biscuits, Charles Chocolates, Universal and Sunshine Cereals. So for us, our consumers are predominantly families, women, or the buyers are predominantly women, and, and of course, children. And so this is a huge part of our customer base and consumer base. So we feel it's our responsibility, one, to make sure that we contribute towards, you know, enhancing and, and helping our communities in, in, in short. And this particular issue, I mean, I can, I think unanimously across the group of companies, everyone, when, when, us, when Freetown came to us with the idea, it's, and we'll explain further, but it all started with a song, Oshun, when they came to us with the idea, we, it, it was an immediate yes from all heads of company, all heads of management, all, all directors. It was incredible how everyone came together and said, yes, we need to get behind this and we need to make sure that this message is spread and we find ways to help eradicate this, this, this disease, I would say, that is violence against women. And you're saying that, and I'm getting, I'm getting the pause or reason, or if I was in Jamaica, I'd say I'm getting cold seed. But um, it, it, especially during the pandemic, Ms. Innes, it seems as though we're seeing a lot more the, the power of private entities joining forces with government to influence or better outcomes, rather. And why do you think is um, we don't necessarily have more persons addressing gender-based violence like this or in their own manner, but in a, an aggressive way that people can see, okay, so we're creating a groundswell. It's, I mean, it's a sensitive topic. It's, it's, it's not something that it's beautiful and glamorous. It's something that's hard to talk about. It's something that's hard to deal with. It's very hard to deal with. And it's also something that we all know cannot be eliminated immediately. It's a step-by-step -step process and it takes time, resources, and it also takes commitment. And I think that's where we as a company and group said, you know, we really want to commit to this. We want to make sure that we we're able to build awareness and help the survivors. That's the biggest part of it for us in terms of being able to encourage the community, not just corporate or government, but just general human beings around the region to contribute to this cause and, and really begin to understand the damage that it creates, not just for a person, but for families, for groups, for communities, for society on a whole. And that is something that we want to pick back up when we return from this break. We are speaking about the Love Over Everything project. Stay with us. We'll return with more. In the still of the night I lay listening to you breathe People search for heaven all their lives How lucky am I Heaven's breathing next to me Oshun mi ba mi ba mi shani Oshun mi ba Raise your voice. 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 Welcome back. We are speaking about the Love Over Everything project we're doing. So with Taj Nali Shields, Mohammed Mwakil, and uh, Catherine Innes. And one of the things I wanted to ask Ms. Shields is... What kind of impact have you seen since um, there's this sort of face, there's this song, there's this artistic element that is helping with the work that you're doing in schools, with the one-on-one -on -one interactions that you're having? 
one of the most impactful things that we can see, and especially in real time, is the knowledge change and the the willingness of especially our children to get involved in conversations, involved in um, some of the the activities that we're doing to change, you know, the the landscape and the culture of gender based violence. It's very interesting to see what their thoughts are about their own communities, about their own lives, about their own experiences. So I've made that choice with my child to, to correct some of the mistakes that my mother made. Each and every day she motivates me to push forward, to try to end sexual abuse in Jamaica. Um, and we see those things coming out in each and every one of the interventions that we do. And it's really interesting to watch because we get to see the heart of the communities. We get to see what the real issues are and what the real concerns are and some of the real um, things that are contributing to gender-based violence within the region. So I think that's one of the most impactful things that we see on a day-to-day -day basis as a result of the project. Thank you so much. And Mohammed, one of the things that Michelle just touched on is that different persons have their own individual stories. How do you feel looking at this song that you would have had or had come from a particular place of influence, Oshun, this lullaby, uh, interpreted by the different directors? So you have the same, it's coming from a similar place, but there's a different story being told. How does that how does that make you feel? What do you think when you see these different interpretations? Act one, act two, act three. Yeah. Um, music is a part of the mission, but more so music is the vehicle. And when we, when we are able to create music that has tangible effect, like you could see it in real time in terms of being able to channel resources to people and being able to highlight these types of things that we are very passionate about. I mean, I feel like, I feel like my purpose has ignited I feel like this is what we're here for. Because if it's just to create nice music and have people go, well, that's nice, you know? <laughs> because that's one of the reasons why we said in the beginning, when I, when I wrote this song, I said to myself, I, I really don't want to just, you know, do a video and just be like, yeah, that's, that's a nice song. You know, I wanted to, to, this song kept saying to me, I'm more than just a song, you know? I'm way more than just a song. So it feels amazing. Honestly, it, it feels amazing and it continues to unfold. I really like that continuing to unfold. And Ms. Innes, I want to take that story up with that, that question up with you, but in a different uh, sort of way, though. Did you think the idea was too big? It was like, um, we, let, we go, we're going to support, we're going to support one, as opposed to this act one, two and three, that sounded kind of expansive. And so <laughs> in terms of like what went into that, especially since you wanted to go a little further into the song itself, Oshun, so I'll ask you for that experience because we're also looking at the fact that we had members of ABIL holding up their own signs as opposed to just saying, okay, well, I'm going to help, I'm going to give resources as opposed to saying, I'm going to show up, I'm going to add my position, my face to this, to this position that we're having as a company. No, it Surprisingly, no, we, we didn't think it was too large at all. Um, as I said before, we understand that it, it's not going to be an overnight success story. This is something that is going to have to start somewhere. And we, we figured what better way to, than to start with this song and, and this production of these beautiful videos by Caribbean artists and Caribbean directors and producers um, that really depicts how gender-based gender -based violence can affect a family, can affect different elements of life. Um, so that was that was just one part of the project. The other part was making sure we, we were able to support, as I said, the survivors and, and raise awareness through E for Life in Jamaica and in Trinidad would have been um, the Rape Crisis Society. Our number one goal was to help the Rape Crisis Society, and that is in Trinidad, um, get more counselors so that they can treat with more survivors. Um, and over the last year, thankfully, we were able to get them to see 440, at least 440 new uh, additional survivors to help them through and the process of healing. Or, or um, And similarly with rape, with 
Youth for Life in Jamaica. Our goal is really to try and help them help the survivors. So all these organizations, there's so many organizations out there that, that really need the support of the public and corporate and government so that we can keep this going. And because it's it's not something that's going to stop, as I said, immediately, we need to help the survivors while also raising awareness and teaching our young boys and, and men and women to understand that violence is a choice. We don't have to take that route. And that's why this song is so important and resonates. Choose love. We can choose love. We can, and by 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 saying choose love, I don't mean airy fairy love. I mean choosing a diff, an alternative, something that is not as there's always going to be conflict. Conflict is part of life, but you do not have to address it in a violent manner. And one of the things that you just did for me, Ms. and this was kind of validate the question that I had in terms of rallying around specific things, as opposed to saying, okay, well, love, that's airy fairy. As opposed to saying conflict is inevitable, violence is a choice. So that is a specific something that you can galvanize yourself behind or just saying love over everything. I'm not sure who to ask, whether or not it would be Muhammad or you, Ms. Innes. Um, How did you go about saying, okay, well, these are the directors that we want to give the sacred task of sharing their story or sharing this story? Yeah, that, that, would, have been on, that would have been on my end. Um, I know that filmmakers have it really difficult, like in terms of artists, filmmakers, you know, <laughs> there isn't, there isn't a, a wide market for them in terms of what they do. You have a lot of independent filmmakers who, you know, they have it difficult. And then I would, I would also suppose that within that environment, um, female filmmakers have it even more difficult, right? I would suppose because women generally have it more difficult in every single space anyway. And so, yeah, we just came up with this with this idea and I said, okay, who across the region is doing work? And then I started asking, you know, I, I asked a friend of mine in Jamaica to send me a list of people and we went through some work and Gabrielle Black, Black, Blackwood had recently done some work um, with Clarks in Jamaica with a few artists and the work that she was doing there I thought was really amazing. I love what she was doing. And I said, okay, reach out to her. Um, Melanie Grant as well, out of Barbados, was really doing some amazing work. So, and, and well, Maya Cozier from Trinidad. And we just really wanted to highlight them as much as possible and give them an opportunity to, to have a voice in this space. But I wanted to say one thing too, DK. You know, we, we um, when you have, let's say, a, a case of violence against a, um, a woman, right, in, in the society, we focus so much on the punitive aspect of it. All the headlines in the papers about the man, what he did, and what's going to happen to him. And then they follow the case, and they follow the man, and they follow the man, and they follow the man, and the man gets locked up, and then nobody cares. And that, to me, is like, you know, are we that obsessed with gore? Are we that obsessed with, with violence that we don't realize that there are victims? We should really be following the victims, because they are such a major part of the story. But we, we, we act as if we care because we are, we are, we are dealing with the perpetrator. But we really don't care because the person that needs our attention and care is the victim. And we very rarely deal with the victim. And that actually also reminds me of the case in Jamaica, the Armadale fire, where there is Randy McLaren, who would have followed that in a manner. So it's not following the ladies as though we're following to see, okay, well, how they are falling, but how we can help build and how we can help raise. So in yeah. the final minute that we have for you, Taj Nali, and then for you, Ms. Innes, I want to ask what are some of the things, the activities that is that are taking place with you all, your respective organizations, inside the 16 month or well, the 16 days of activism task? Okay, so we are very busy <laughs> at this period, um, as can be expected. Um, we have a few appearances, um, so you can look out for on social media um, to know what the next step is going to be. Uh, we, a part of for life work is um, paying attention to survivors and what survivors need. And a lot of our activities around this time are going to center, you know, listening to survivors and hearing what they have to say about their experiences and some of the things that they need and seeing how we can elevate those voices. Thank you so much, Ms. Innes. You have yes, the final. But for us, we are thankfully continuing to work with uh, Freetown Collective to go to the next stage of, of our project and, and continue the work, uh, as well as continue to support the initial causes or the initial foundations that we've been supporting over the last year, be it Eve for Life, Rape Crisis, and we're also exploring other options at this time. 
and yes, we're wearing orange and encouraging others too. And we, I would also just like to encourage persons to, to, to take a look at our, our Instagram, our social pages, so that you could keep abreast of what's happening and what we're doing and, and get involved yourselves. Um, it's loveovereverything.love on Instagram. That should be the easiest to find. It's also the same um, tag or handle on Facebook. We also have a website. Once you go to the, the social pages, you'll get the website link um, or even Freetown pages. We, we really just want to encourage people to support and really rally around this cause because it needs to stop. It really does. Catherine Innes, Mohamed Mwakil, Taj Nali Shields, thank you so much. You wrapped up for me, Ms. Innes, so I don't need to give the website anymore, but I will say that conflict is inevitable. Violence is a choice. Thank you for the work that you are doing, and we want to thank you on behalf of the TTT News team for tuning in with us. This has been In Depth with me, DK Rasta. Thank you so much for joining us. But on all these angels know how I feel about you Ah. But on all these